What's going on Kaiju community? This is Kaiju Poo here, bringing you yet another toy review. Today we'll be taking a look at the uh, Hyatt Toys Mothra. Now I'm pretty sure this is still considered a basic exquisite. I don't know if that was exclusively to the GVK uh, figure line that Hyatt has. But uh, anyways, this Mothra is based on the Godzilla King of the Monsters movie. Uh, the third entry to the MonsterVerse uh, movie series, and essentially, I guess, a sequel to Godzilla 2014. Now, Hot Toys has done an incredible job so far with all the figures they've created, uh, spanning from both Godzilla vs. Kong to Godzilla King of the Monsters, and soon to be uh, Kong Skull Island, and then hopefully Godzilla 2014. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this review. All right, so taking a look at the box art, Hyatt Toys always has kind of a similar uh, layout when it comes to the actual box. Uh, this one I want to say is a little better. Uh, it seems like as time progresses with them releasing more figures that the box art kind of steps up its game a little bit. Uh, nothing crazy impressive, but uh, it's definitely uh, more cool to look at, I guess, in, in the way it's laid out. So... Uh, first things first, right, we have the actual figure itself here, um, showing, I guess, the detailing and then uh, the overall look of the figure. Uh, in the back, as you can see, that it's that poster art that we got when Godzilla King of the Monsters first uh, started its, uh, uh, not commercializing, but essentially like its advertising. So, uh, And then here we got some cool little uh, details of the figure. They're not the best. I'm assuming what they were going for is to get like a better look at the detail. Maybe they should have did some different shots because literally this is kind of just like a cropped out shot. But it uh, still works. And then you have another shot here of the figure. Again, I don't really know what their goal was here, but it works, right? But uh, yeah, so we got some branding. Uh, guys are looking at the monsters. We got Haya. Some warning information there. Then obviously Mothra. To the side, we got the actual poster. Uh, art right there that we've seen uh, during the advertisement and during the actual release of the movie. Again, some more uh, logos. You got guys like King of the Monster and the Haya logo. Taking a look at the back, I'm assuming this is all in Chinese. Uh, this is like the product information, probably contact information, all that good stuff. We got some more shots of the figure in full frame. Uh, I'm not too exactly sure what this here at the bottom is if anyone can translate or even put in the comments of what it is to better inform everybody else i'd appreciate it and on the other side we have uh the same as the other again the poster uh shot of mothra that we got during the advertisement and the same thing uh the branding so yeah not too much to say about the box um these boxes are uh again like i said are starting to improve when it comes to like artwork uh, obviously it doesn't really have a display feature to it. There's like no opening uh, window or anything where it's displayed in its blister. So yeah, but yeah, overall cool box. If you keep it, you keep it. If you don't, you don't. I don't really think it makes or breaks uh, the figure. So yeah, moving on. Now that we have Mothra on box, we can now take a look at everything that she comes with. Now, as you can see, we have Mothra here spinning on this little display piece here. And uh, let me adjust the camera a little bit. And in the back, you can see that we have the flight stand. Now, you're probably wondering, Kaiju, why is Mothra not on the flight stand? Well, let me tell you guys. The weakest part of this entire figure is probably the flight stand. Now, as easy as it is to assemble it, displaying anything in it is almost impossible. Uh... Let me go ahead and grab it so you guys can explain, or so I can further explain. So taking it apart, I just broke apart in my hand. <laughs> taking it apart, right, we have these two very common um, with anything, any figure that usually has flight. We have these two little pieces here that essentially can grab, right? It can adjust and grab the waist. Well, in this case, Mothra's waist is not only too big, but it's too wide for this to fully grasp. Not only that, these, um, these little... I don't know, fingers or whatever you want to call them, these gripping pieces here, the claws, are so brittle, are so easy to take apart. Like, let me just show you guys. It is very, very simple to just pop them out. Like, they almost slide out as if they don't even, they weren't meant to be there. 
right? They look good and everything. When you try to put anything or any pressure towards it or trying to even squeeze it to get Mothra to sit, to be fully seated in, it just pops out like nothing. So that's my first issue. Second issue, as you probably heard, um, as easy as these are to assemble, right? It's just a simple push like any other flight stand. Uh, here's here's the base here that it comes with. As easy as it is to assemble, it's very like easy to also take apart, right? Um, just trying to get her into the flight stand. The base kept falling off. Uh, it's probably gonna do that now. It kept falling off there. This piece kept falling out because I was moving it too much and not what exactly what I want in the flight stand, especially with, luckily these figures aren't brittle, right? They're mostly like a soft plastic or um, depending on what figure it is, they have some built-in rubber pieces to it to allow for articulation. But for the most part, right, these are all soft plastic. You won't have uh, too many chances of breaking unless it's like maybe like a, a middle joint like on Kong, which I'll end up reviewing very soon. But yeah, aside from that, these pretty much useless. I don't even use them. I hate them. Absolutely hate the uh, flight stands they come with. And they also come with these two pieces, which I'm assuming are to combine uh, the base plates of the flight stands. Uh, that's what I'm assuming for display purposes. But again, like, ooh, I'm not even gonna use the flight stands, but yeah. So m moving on to the more important part and the main focus of this review, whoops, uh, Mothra, right? <clears throat> uh, first glance, before I even take any in-depth look, she's beautiful. Uh, the color paint applications are 100% better than what we've had in the past. Uh, I don't have, unfortunately, the NECA Mothra, but I do have the Tamashi uh, SH Monster Arts Mothra, which I'll compare here in a bit. But yeah, first glance, beautiful. Um, you can see like the, the detailing. You can see, man, I'll, I'll go in depth in a sec, but yeah, first initial look, beautiful figure. So let's go ahead and take an in-depth look at it. All right, guys, had the chance to set up a little bit to review this guy. It would be really awkward if I tried to review him in a flight or her in a flight stand, so I'm just going to make do with what I have. But uh, overall, uh, this figure looks spectacular. Uh, the overall design, um, sculpt, and the paint applications, the detailing, it's all phenomenal. Um, I'm going to start with the wings because it's obviously the biggest thing on the figure and probably has the most detail uh, than the rest of the figure. So... Yeah, as we can see, right, as we know, moths in uh, nature, they'll have these um, mimic eyes, right? Those are to ward, uh, ward off any predators or anything like that that may be hunting them. Well, in the movie, uh, according to the lore, these eyes are supposed to represent Godzilla's eyes. Um, I guess you can see, reminisce what the eyes look like uh, on Godzilla. I'm not too sure if they're supposed to be 100% accurate. I assume not because, again, this is an animal in nature. You can't expect it to mimic it 100%. But, yeah, um, paint applications, wonderful. Uh, I'll try to get it in screen. Uh, if you notice, uh, one thing I will say it's really cool that Haya did is Haya captured... So, moths have, like, not regular... Um, they're not, like, mo like kind of like butterflies. Butterflies... You don't really notice it, but moths have these very def definitive, uh, the fur on their wings. Uh, moths are kind of hairy, I would say. And uh, they also have that dust, obviously, that we all know, that powder that comes off whenever you touch them. They captured the individual hairs, not perfectly, but as, I mean, as good as you probably could get for this scale. Uh, I'm trying to get it within the light. It's really hard to see, probably via camera, but it's there. Um... There's strands of hair and it looks wonderful. It brings out the detail. Uh, the paint job complements it because it's not a single direction. It's in multi-directions. It's in the flow of the wing. Uh, and then from there, you can also see kind of like the veins. Or maybe it's not veins because I, I, don't, I, you know, I don't really know the anatomy of a bug or a moth. But um, yeah, you can, you can see the detailing that they, the strides they went, the amount they put into it. And then that's just the main wings. Another cool detail, right? You can see it. It kind of the, the light seeps through like you can see my hand shadow um, so when you're lighting this figure up for photography right you, you can do some really cool things with it you can uh, mimic that shine or stuff like that like it there's so many so much so many opportunities you can do with uh, a figure like this when when it has like these small little detailing that these companies um, 
uh, focus on, right? So yeah, so that's the main wings, the small wings, about the same. Uh, they're not as see-through, but they're also not as big. But still, even there, they, they still um, achieve to put like the hairs, the, the paint job, everything is, is it looks great, right? Um, now let's move on to the the main body. Main body looks wonderful. Um, in my opinion, looks a lot more accurate to the movie than than what we've got in the past. I think NECA did a great job. Unfortunately, I don't have the NECA, as I said before, but uh, they did a great job with nailing like the sculpt. Right? I'm trying to get a good look at it, but it's a little hard. The colorway, in my opinion, matches it well. You're not gonna get 100% perfection when it comes to figures of the scale, but it's still um, really good overall sculpt, in my opinion. Yeah, let's go ahead and take that in. But um, yeah. Paint job has like a, a, a main brown body with a, it looks like dry a dry brush of like a tan or bone uh, bone white or something like that. Oops, uh, it's really nice. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to get it in there. But yeah, compared to that weird orange that uh, SH Monsters chose to use, I think this complements the figure well. It's not too much. It's not overdone. Uh, the paints are kind of muted in a way in some in some areas, whereas it should be. Uh, one thing I will say, it also has like the blue, subtle blue to um, that orange. I don't remember the exact scenes in the movie if it had that, but I do uh, appreciate them having like the subtle change. So maybe, maybe we might get a poster color version. We might get the the version of him where he's like most, she's mostly blue. We'll see. Uh, Haya is expanding ever so slowly with what they can do. So yeah, awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the articulation. All right, so to break down articulation, uh, fairly simple on this figure. There's not really much you can do. Uh, Let's we'll start off with the wings. So wings can move far, about this far, up. And I'm assuming if you move this out the way, it can, it can move decently far down. It's like on a, a hinge joint almost. Um, a lot of people are scared about this because these are liable to break. But uh, after messing around this guy for about like a week or so, a little longer, uh, I've had no issues, no worries or like tension on the, um, on this joint that would cause me to worry. It also can rotate, so it has like a bit of a swivel. I'm sure, yeah, it can go 360 degrees. Yep, and it can move, like I said, up this far, down this far. Um, you have this wing kind of in the way that kind of it tends to get in the way of the full articulation of the bigger wing, but that's okay because I mean most of the time you don't see uh, Mothra having her wings at a, at a super down position, aside from when she's over the ocean, right? Uh, most of the time it's just up. And that. So you can kind of get some good poses, uh, mimic some of the movie scenes. But yeah, so uh, as, as the bigger wing is, the smaller wing here has a 360 degree rotation. Move down that far, up this far. And then like I said, you can angle it and do that. You just gotta be careful because this joint does kind of like rub. Uh, against the other it doesn't cause any like paint issues that I've noticed any uh, so far but uh, it will get in the way so as you could do with this side obviously you could do this side so moving down um, to the arms so the arms are on I believe a ball joint um, there's only articulation in the actual like shoulder uh, which can move 306 degrees um, nothing crazy out of this guy uh, where it comes to like arm articulation they probably could have added like a second um maybe like joint uh hinge joint to the to the elbow of um of mothra but i mean this is you know what, what do we expect at this scale of a figure maybe if a bigger figure would have the ability to do more but at that point you'd probably just be risking uh a possible breakage or anything like that so um yeah so anyways moving on to uh, the small arms small arms are also on a ball joint they don't really have much they can do they're on like a 360 degree swivel because the ball joint so you can you can move it into positions you can't mimic maybe the iconic scenes as perfect as you may want to but you still have the ability to do so right so the attack mode or something like that or Mothra's about to kick some butt but yeah uh, then moving down to the legs back legs um, got some movements on a ball joint as well most of the the legs and uh, extremities are on ball joints uh, I think it's best for this design. Doesn't really make sense to have anything else. But uh, yeah, you can move it. Can't get really much of a split. You can move it 306 degrees, that far in this far. There's really not much you could do here, but in reality, um, 
there wasn't really much you could do in the movie, right? I mean, these fold up. I know in the movie when she's doing like that that glide attack or when she's on her way to help Godzilla and then uh, Rodan comes and swoops in. But yeah, overall, um, I will say this is uh, decent, you know. Um, I feel like I can handle this without worry uh, compared to um, the SH Monster Arts, which I will be doing a comparison here in a sec. But yeah, uh, I think what they maybe could have add. Um, oh, it does. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Okay, so... There is a waist swivel, all right? So I don't know if it's a ball joint or not, but uh, okay, yeah, you can you kind of, I didn't notice this <laughs> uh, when I was initially playing around with it, but uh, you can, in fact, move the lower um, half of, of Mothra's body, right? So this can move and, and shift and whatnot and can turn 360 degrees. Uh, so you can, you can kind of like manipulate it a little bit. Let's see. Um, can't really go crunch too much, you know, about that far. You can bring it about that far. It's just cool to be able to have it. Not really much I would expect myself to use, utilize it for, uh, maybe in like certain positions or photography wise, but aside from that, yeah. Um, really don't figure. Articulation is not too bad. Kind of what I expected for a figure of this scale. Um, detailing, honestly, is probably the biggest uh, benefit from this figure. Uh, honestly, is probably the biggest thing a figure like this and in, in this size should have is the detail focus articulation not really too worried about but I mean for what it was it has it's it, it works right uh, wings aren't too loose oh, well, I guess oh, they are a little loose I guess over time right this is probably will become an issue as this piece here will wear and can't hold its position for as long but for what it is right now uh, it's good tight and it works but yeah so that pretty much does it for the articulation Right, I'm going to do my best with a side-by-side side -side comparison. So uh, this is the SH Monster Arts uh, Mothra. Right off the bat, one thing I will notice is the wings are super small. Like, I don't know if it's maybe because the, the built itself is a little smaller. Um, but, yeah, the the overall, like, body to wings, I feel like it's off a little bit. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm off or maybe because I'm used to how big the wings are for the uh, Haya. Haya's body build is not that much bigger, but the wings are massive. So right off the bat, I will say uh, Haya is winning there when it comes to that, the overall detailing there with the size and uh, proportions. Uh, moving on to detail. So <sighs> SH Monster Arts did a, a job, uh, not maybe not the best job, but the wings look decent. Uh, it's mostly of a hard plastic, very, it feels very brittle. Uh, the wings are on a ball joint, so you probably have a little bit more, um, what is it called, posability in that case. But the overall look, I mean, come on, man. Like, I get high as a little bigger, but just look at the detailing difference, right? Look at the eye. The eye looks like in here as if it's like something you can find in nature. The way it blends in with the fur, uh, the overall sculpt and paint applications, right? They did their job here. This almost looks like it's just printed on. Like, I don't know. I would kind of expect this in maybe like a one of the uh, monster movie series, like kind of like the vinyl, soft vinyls. I, I would expect this type of detailing on that, not in an SH Monster Arts figure, especially for the price point that you get these guys at. And then uh, maybe I'm wrong, but like, look at the comparison in detail. This looks more movie accurate, in my opinion. I mean, they got, they got maybe maybe they're. I haven't seen a CGI model of, of Mothra, but I mean, just take a look, guys. Look at the difference. I mean, the color change here, I love the blue transitioning into the, the orange. Uh, I love the fact that you can have like the see-through. This is just a solid piece on the SH Monster Art. There's really not much you can do with that. Now, I will say, uh, moving on to like the body, right? Uh, I do appreciate them painting these are more defined this there's more of a fur look uh to the sh monster arts the colorway seems a little off i don't remember mothra being this orange i honestly remember being a more brown like uh we see in the higher figure i think this is more accurate to the movie uh, i will say um Haya kind of misses the the mark when it comes to like you know, obviously you have the fur and the wings but they don't really have it throughout the actual sculpt itself it doesn't look like 
um, it has that mothy fur. Now, when I when I pick up the um, SH, I can kind of see the essence of it in the neck. Uh, it's really hard to pick up because this is such a small figure. And my camera's not the best. I'm using an iPhone right now, but um, I, will, I will say maybe like the the sculpt on the body, like the definition or detailing, may be a little better in the SH, but that's that's a reach. And honestly, in all honesty, I still prefer the Haya figure over. Um, over the SH Monster Arts. The scale of it, the feel of it, holding it, the look, everything of that is just phenomenal. Um, this, she's very brittle feeling. Like I feel like if I move these pieces in a certain way, then I'll, I'll end up breaking it, which I, no one wants to feel in the figure, right? No one wants to feel um, the fragileness of a figure, especially paying a, the price point that you get for SH Martial Arts, you, you don't want to feel that. And you also don't want to have to deal with um, the uh, quality QC issues that a lot of SH Martial Arts figures come with. But figure's not bad, right? It's not a bad figure. Pick it up if you want, if you're a perfect or a perfectionist. <laughs> if you're a completionist for the SH Martial Arts series, Luckily, I'm not. Um, I think I started to fall off when I started collecting uh, the MonsterVerse because the inconsistency with it. Um, but yeah, overall, SH Monsters has a decent figure. Not my favorite. In my opinion, I, I'd much rather have the um, the NECA over the SH Monsters, just from what I'm hearing. But um, luckily, Haya uh, picked up where NECA left off. And uh, is making huge strides. So, super excited for what is to come. Uh, Haya has announced many figures since um, Skullcrawler. Uh, we know we're getting now the all the Toho, hopefully, the Toho uh, monsters that we see from the original. And we still got 2014 that still has yet to have anything uh, touched on yet. So, I'm super excited about that see some accurate 2014 figurines maybe a muto or something of that we'll see we'll probably get a cocoon too well i mean the possibilities are endless hopefully they start to add accessories aside from the um the uh, flight stands really hoping on that but yeah overall i will say haya has i mean i've really, really outdone themselves with um the sh monster arts or geez, the uh, King of the Monsters line and GVK line so far. Uh, up next to be reviewed is, if you can see him right in the back corner, is Kong, and we'll also do a comparison as well. But as for uh, overall, I will say Haya takes the the crown here. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you guys' support and uh, everything you guys do. And until next time, peace.